Hello, I'm Forrester and welcome to my channel. In this video I'll be reviewing the Star Citizen ship, the Anvil Carrack. Star Citizen is currently in public alpha test with the Carrack as one of the flyable ships. As the Star Citizen ship modules are an experience in themselves, I thought it would be helpful to review a selection in turn. The Carrack is built as a multi-crew exploration ship one which you could bring a group of friends along with you and as an exploration ship the Carrack is mostly designed for navigating the Star Citizen universe, finding new locations or jump points and being a home away from home. I've split this review into five sections, starting with a ship tour and deck flow, assessing combat performance, reviewing handling and visibility, looking at the operating and purchasing costs and finally summarising. I've included timestamps in the video description to help navigate to each part of the review. Part 1. Ship Tour and Deck Layout The Carrack is split across four decks, from the sub-deck at the bottom, rising to the habitation deck, up to the technical deck, and finally the cartography deck at the top of the ship. I'll start the tour entering the sub-deck from ground level. From the ground, access to the Carrick is via the deployable ship ramp at the front, which takes into the vehicle garage. Usually comes equipped with a Ursa rover. In this case, you can see there's plenty of room actually probably for a couple of different vehicles, but plenty of room for a tumbrel, cyclone, etc. And there is an optional deployable ramp at the back, which just makes sure that the vehicle doesn't go into any crew members waiting at the back. Off the left hand side there is access to the service ladder which takes you up to the third deck. Moving through the main door on the left is access to the elevator which goes up decks 1 to 3 with a small access button. There is also access to the docking collar and airlock which has space for EVA suits as well. Moving further forward on the sub deck is three cargo pods. These will be deployable eventually in the game so that you can get rid of them uh, but you can see that they do currently store cargo albeit not to their full capacity. On each of the cargo pods is an elevator which takes you down into the cargo pod itself and also returns you to the catwalk. Moving towards the rear of the sub deck is a lobby room with access to the main elevator. This gives access to all four decks of the Carrack. There is also on either side a weapons locker and access to three suit storage. On either side there is access to the aft turret room which takes you through to the deployable aft turret. Moving from front to back on the habitation deck the key feature at the front of the lower bridge is clearly the high visibility cockpit. You can see a great deal from here. In the centre there's a centre mounted pilot seat as well as a left and right mounted co-pilot seat. There are various little cubby holes for avionics as well as access to the eight server blades within the Carrack. At the rear of the bridge is an elevator which gives access to the upper bridge. Moving through the main deck, neatly marked along the wall is the captain's dormitory. Also has some neat little features like deployable screens. At the side of the captain's room is the captain's berth, including a deployable cupboard, and access to the captain's shower and ablutions. Moving further back on the right hand side is access to the mess hall, including an external facing window, and opposite the mess hall are the crew quarters. Initially, a bit of a crew ready room with a pool table. Off the side is access to the crew bunks. There are five bunks in here, including five cupboards for storage. And at the back is the access to the two crew showers.
On the opposite side of the crew ready room, it has access to the crew toilet, which includes two cubicles. Flowing rear on the habitation deck is access to medical. Within the medical facility there are two patient beds as well as main ICU bed. It's possible to set this as your main ICU through this panel on the wall. Blanking that is the medical storage room and on the opposite side is the doctor's office. Back out from the med bay is access to a currently locked door which will give access to the ladder as well as these two corridors that run either side of the medical bay. These lead through to the main elevator which takes decks one through four. Starting from the front of the technical deck is the upper bridge. Common theme from the lower bridge is the fantastic visibility out of the cockpit. Most prominent feature at the front is the command station, which is a top-mounted pilot seat with full access to movement controls. Moving further back is the star map, and on either side of the upper bridge are two support command stations with full access to power, comms, and the usual support co-pilot crew options. At the rear of the bridge is the elevator, which goes to the lower bridge only. Leaving the bridge are six escape pods and then the main corridor. To the port side of the main corridor is the repair room which is a small ancillary room, the idea behind which is there's a 3D printer to fabricate parts and you do your ship repairs here. On the opposite side to the repair room is the drone room. There is a drone command station as well as the drone deployment mechanism and a second drone command station. Leaving the drone room, moving further back behind the ship, is the main elevator with access to decks one through three and a window which shows the hangar. There's also a control panel for the hangar doors which gives access to any member of the crew to be able to open and close the hangar. On either side is a walkway with access to a window which has a good visibility over the hangar. There's also two physicalised airlocks which give access to the hangar bay itself. The hangar bay is not huge, uh, room in here for very small ships like an 85X or the bundled Pisces. At the rear is access to the main elevator, which goes through all four decks. And on either side of the elevator access are the port and starboard turret accesses. There's quite a long corridor to walk through in order to get access to the turrets themselves. There's also, joining both of those corridors, a nice little engineering overwatch room which feels a little bit protected. And on either side is access to the main engineering compartment. At the rear there's an elevator which can toggle between upper engineering and lower engineering. At the rear there is also a ladder which gives access to the lower engineering. Within the lower engineering, there's a room on either side which gives access to fuel tanks A and B, as well as these little panels which do move. I imagine these may have access to component storage in the future, and similar at the rear. As the main elevator takes you out to the cartography deck, you're instantly greeted with the cartography map in the centre. 
There is an accessible console which can be powered up which can give access to power or comms. On either side of the elevator is an escape pod as well as two EVA suit storage and the hatch which runs through to the airlock. Symmetrical on either side. This includes an EVA airlock for access outside of the ship which just leads through to the top of the carrot. Part 2. Combat Performance The Carrick is armed with four turrets for self-defence, three manned turrets armed with two size 4 weapons, and a remote dorsal turret also armed with two size 4 weapons. Depending what is in the ship hangar, combat performance could be further supplemented by a snub fighter. Overall, the turrets feel defensive in nature, with good arc coverage of the Carrick, but limited firepower compared to some of her peers, and the lack of any missile or torpedo firepower is notable. Access to the turrets can take a little time, particularly if the crew are all on the bridge whilst quantum travelling. That said, the shields feel quite sturdy, and even with a full crew complement, I feel very confident facing off against most AI threats currently populating the Stanton system. Part 3. Handling and Visibility This is where the Carrick really comes into her own, as an exploration ship. Handling is reasonably good for a ship of the size, and pointing the nose with reasonable precision comes naturally. Although acceleration and braking is a little sluggish due to the size of the Carrick, the top speed is incredible, and this trend continues in atmospheric flight. The visibility is absolutely fantastic from both the upper and lower controls. I found myself rotating through them using the lower pilot's chair in particular for landing and the upper station to assist in takeoff. The combined strong handling and visibility properties make the Carrick a very easy ship to take off and land despite the size. As might be expected from an exploration ship, the quantum drive is reasonably quick, which makes crossing the entire star system not feel too onerous. Part 4 Operating Costs So this is a bit of a mixed bag for the Carrick. I suppose I ought to temper this with the idea that the original concept of the Carrick was that exploring new locations or mapping new routes would be the main gameplay loop, including making money from that, which isn't currently implemented. The Carrick stores a good amount of hydrogen and quantum fuel and uses them at a moderate rate. Accordingly, refuel costs can rack up. That said, even without being able to completely fill the three cargo storage bays, at 476 units of storage, the Carrick is the second best hauler currently in Star Citizen, meaning it can run very profitable cargo runs. Combined with the fact that it's very easy to take off and land the Carrick, gives it quite a lot of potential to make quite considerable profit. Which leads me on to part 5, The Verdict. I'm inclined to share a couple of thoughts from friends on this one. Firstly, reflecting on the outside, my friend Wolf remarked, Look what they did to my boy! To fit everything inside, the Carrick has become a very chunky monkey, and it does look far more bulky than some of the original sleek concepts. But I contrast that with another quote, which said, This is the first star citizenship I could see becoming my home, which reflects the well-considered internal layout. To me, I'm somewhere between the two. I really like the versatility of the Carrick, able to run cargo missions, as well as having the space to take plenty of friends out with a Pisces or a Rover to explore the universe. Even making no in-game credits until the gameplay loop is implemented, I enjoyed exploration sessions with my Orc, and the Carrick made that feel quite homely. I'm not sure I'd take it out for combat missions, but the fact that it could defend itself if needs be, or at the very least until it could get away, is a real plus for me. But I think that, in reality, for many, the current implementation could detract from what they hoped for, in particular the lack of meaningful exploration or scanning mechanics in the current build, and for a ship that does re really rely on having a small group of friends to crew it, I think that the pledge cost of 500 US dollars is a big ask, even for a group of players. 
As for earning in-game, though, it could be a really nice goal to work towards for a group of friends who just want a ship to take them out to have some fun over a weekend. But I've not found it for sale in-game anywhere yet, so until I can see final prices, I can't say for sure. I hope you found the ship review useful. I'd love to do more of these in future, so if you enjoyed the video, please press the like button and subscribe to be notified of future content. Please also share any of your own thoughts about the Carrick in the comments. Thank you to my Star Citizen organisation, the United Space Confederation, for helping me to crew this mammoth, and I've shared their details in the video description. And finally, thank you for watching, and I hope you'll hear from me in the next video.